think we can start. And uh, uh, before we start this uh, session, I have to say that this is uh, not last session of our seminar. Uh, we have another one. Uh, it was scheduled in uh, the beginning of the semester, and uh, we expect next week talk of Professor Ganihadjaev. Now let us uh, come back to our event today. Uh, I am happy to uh, open uh, Skorohod readings uh, this year. Uh, this uh, became to be a tradition that at the end of the spring semester, we organize special session for young scientists uh, uh, who, uh, who especially are students, master students from uh, different countries uh, who are interested in uh, stochastic process theory uh, or more general in probability theory. Uh, the name of this reading is uh, Skorohod uh, uh, reading because uh, uh, the, uh, because Anatoly Vladimir Skorohod was the founder of our department of random process. Uh, the, also, he, as everybody knows, he was one of the greatest probabilists of the previous century. Uh, due to him, uh, such uh, branches of uh, random process series, stochastic differential equation, uh, arise. Uh, so uh, we uh, are trying to keep his uh, tradition, uh, which consists in a, a constant uh, attention to the young generation. Uh, we want to attract new people to such a nice object, such a nice science as a theory of random process. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, especially speakers who will be, uh, 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 who, who will make the talk today uh, already uh, get flavor uh, of the work in the random process theory. So uh, first of all, I wish you good luck on this way and uh, continue this way uh, despite any troubles and problems which you will face in your life. And now we will begin our session and the first speaker is uh, Merten Minarzik uh, from uh, University of Braunschweig uh, with the talk Stochastic Calculus for Randomly Scaled Hausian Processes Related to Generalized Time Fractional Evolution Equation. Uh, his supervisor is Jana Kinderknecht. Uh, please. Yes, thank you for, for the uh, nice introduction. I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. Okay, then I would uh, share my screen to show you my presentation. So, I hope everyone can. I don't hear anything. Uh, yes, uh, I think that uh, his internet uh, switching. Merton, uh, can you hear me? Uh, Georgi, can you write him? Okay. 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 Can you hear me again? Uh, yes. Now, now uh, we can hear you. Uh, yeah. It seems that I had some connection problems. The program crashed. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Can you hear me now and see my presentation? Uh, yes. Now everything is okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, okay. Then let's start. Oh, I'm having some feedback. From, yeah, okay. All right. So yeah, as I've already said, thanks for the nice presentation. My name is Merten Dinacek. 
I'm currently studying in my master's degree at the Technical University of Braunschweig in Germany, and I'm being advised by Jana Kinderknecht. So today I want to talk about the preliminary results of my thesis with the title of Stochastic Calculus for Randomly Scaled Gaussian Processes Related to Generalized Time Fractional Evolution Equations. A very brief and somewhat vague uh, word about the motivations. So the modeling of real world systems motivates uh, stochastic calculus for randomly scaled fractional Brownian motions. However, these processes are no semi-martingales, so the classical Ito theory of integration cannot be applied. Thus, we need to find a different approach to define an integral with respect to randomly scaled fractional Brownian motion. I will explain all these terms in detail soon. Um, I want to begin with a quick overview over what I'm about to present today and maybe more importantly about the preceding works that this is based on. So in 2003, Christian Bender uh, introduced an integral of Ito type together with a Ito formula with respect to integral or with respect to fractional Brownian motion using the concept of the so-called S transform. In 2022, Mark Gomuloch at the University of Braunschweig generalized this approach in her master thesis to define an integral of Ito type with respect to the more general generalized gray Brownian motion, however, without a generalized Ito formula. So based on these two, mainly based on these two works, we now present an integral with respect to a larger class of a larger class of randomly scaled fractional Brownian motions, including a generalized Ito formula. And additionally, we will apply this Ito formula to the theory of evolution equations, mostly based on the techniques used by Christian Bender and Jana Kinderknecht in their joint 2022 paper. So I will quickly introduce the uh, so process I already talked about, I will assume that everyone is familiar with the notion of the plain two-sided Brownian motion. So I will quickly tell you what we mean by a fractional Brownian motion. So I've written here that the fractional Brownian motion BH, where H is the so-called first parameter between zero and one, is a mean zero Gaussian process with continuous path and a prescribed covariance structure I've shown here. And we will always assume that BH at time zero is zero everywhere. So one can see that this definition only differs from the definition of Brownian motion by the covariance structure. And one can also see that indeed for, if we take H to be exactly one half, we, we cover the definition of a Brownian motion. So those are the processes Christian Bender was concerned with in his preceding work. But we will talk about the more general concept of randomly scaled fractional Brownian motion. So for the take a fractional Brownian motion pH from above and assume that we also have a strictly positive and independent random variable A, such that the Laplace transform of A adds extends to an entire function on C. Then we take the square root of A times BH to be a randomly scaled fractional Brownian motion. So note that we constructed this process by randomly applying a pathway scaling to the process. But this pathway scaling corresponds in some way to a random time scaling of a Brownian motion. We can observe that the square root of A times the edge of T as the same one dimensional distribution as a plain Brownian motion B at the random time A times T to the two H. Okay. So the, uh, the uh, fact that A and that the Laplace transform of A extends to an entire function is obviously not very necessary uh, 
to define a randomly scaled role in emotion in general, but we will need this extra assumption later on in our consideration. Um, together with these concepts, I want to very, very briefly introduce two fractional operators called H minus and M. I won't go into any detail about how they're defined right here, but yeah, we give a piecewise definition for H between one half and one. We take the operators MH and MH minus and MH plus to be the fractional integral operator of Weil's type. And for H between zero and a half, we take the operator to be the fractional derivative operators of Marshall's type. And for h equal to one half, we take m one half plus minus to be the identity operator. As I said, I won't go into any details about these operators, but they can be used to define or construct Brownian motion from plain Brownian motion. And we'll also use these operator to define uh, our integral later on. Okay. So now I will quickly talk about the general setting. Uh, most of the thesis and in particular, most of this talk will be concerned with. So we always imagine an underlying probability space given by omega uh, G and P carrying a two-sided Brownian motion B and an independent suitable scaling function A suitable here in the sense of the definition of uh, randomly scaled fractional brown motion. Then we can construct on this underlying space a fractional brown motion BH for any desired first parameter H by taking the Wiener integral of the function where we apply the operator MH minus to the indicator function from zero to T. So this is uh, some way to construct a fractional Brownian motion. And indeed, this is how we we'll, uh, assume our fractional Brownian motion is constructed. In particular, we always have this underlying Brownian motion that we can consider on our space. Now, uh, here we can maybe quickly note that is independent of B and by construction also independent of BH. So with our friend, uh, with our fractional Brownian motion and our scaling function, we can realize a fractional a randomly scaled fractional Brownian motion on our underlying space by taking, of course, the square root of A times BH. And we will denote this process by X throughout this whole talk. Two functions on our probability space, but only those functions which are measurable with respect to A and B. So we denote the space uh, L2A you know, as uh, the L2 functions on omega, which are measurable with respect to A and B. And note that uh, X itself is, of course, uh, X T is uh, L to L values uh, stochastic process. So with these uh, this setting laid out, I will go straight to the definition of the integral. Note here that this is, in fact, a very direct generalization of the definition given by uh, Christian Bender in his work. So as I've said, we use the concept of the so-called S transform and we go the same way. Of course, we have to generalize this notion a bit. So we define something we call the S A transform. The theta in the space L to A and any Schwarz function eta, we define the as a transform of theta at eta as the expected value of theta times e to the square root of a times i of eta 
and then times the normalizing factor for the exponential. Note that also, so here the i of eta denotes the Wiener integral of eta with respect to our underlying Brownian motion. So if we have defined that, we can use this notion to define an integral with respect to the process x. Uh, excuse me, uh, mm -hmm. can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, here you use this notation e in power square of a multiply by the integral from each aspect of in motion divided by its uh, expectation. Mm. Square root of a, this is a uh, usual stochastic exponent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yes. exactly. So in the uh, absence of square root of a, we have a well-known Fourier Wiener transform of the random variable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yes. And mm -hmm. this was the yeah. expression used by Christian Bender. Yeah, in yeah. The absence uh, of any scaling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 the next one, the definition of the action of this uh, Gaussian integral onto a random function is such that we just have uh, to put inside uh, the S transforms of these uh, objects, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So if we take uh, the point of view that uh, we consider L2A as a Hilbert space, for example, then we would have uh, basically a weak definition of the integral. Where we mm -hmm. already prescribe how these uh, SA transform linear operators act on the uh, integral. Yeah. So it's in particular not a pathwise definition or anything. Yeah. yeah. As I've already said, if we take a process Y, which maps from some subset of real numbers to the space to A, to A valued process, then we take theta to be the integral over m of yt with respect to x, if and only if the SA transform of theta evaluated at eta has the form we present right here. And of course, notation m as a domain mm -hmm. of integration and m is as a operator are different m, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. of course, yeah, yeah. So m here is just, some Borel measurable subsets in the uh, real numbers and not to be confused with the operators MH plus and minus. Yeah. Okay, so this is the definition one can make. Um, indeed, one can show that this theta is uniquely determined by the prescription on the right hand side. So there are no two L2A functions with her, uh, which have the same behavior under the S transform. So this is very important. This is a well-defined definition, but it may not be very obvious that this, uh, or first of all, why we take this definition. I don't want to motivate it here, but uh, it can be done. Michael Gomoloch and Christian Bender both gave nice uh, motivations in their works. But yeah, on the other hand, we don't, Maybe we don't even know if this uh, integral we defined even behaves anything like we would expect from an integral. Uh, therefore, I have some uh, basic properties to show in these. And for example, the integral is in fact linear as we would expect. And we also have the property that if M prime is a measurable subset of M, then the integral over m prime of yt with respect to x is given exactly by the integral or the entire. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I have a question related to property. Mm -hmm. uh, does it mean that if the integral with respect to m capital is well defined, mm -hmm. then for any subset it will be also well defined? Yes, this is uh, one particular. 
uh, it is interesting function. because uh, for example uh, for uh, score hot stochastic integral when we have uh, brownian motion instead of uh, fractional brownian motion but the definition is exactly the same it can be reformulated is exactly the same using Fourier tra Wiener transform uh, then it is known that uh, there are examples when uh, there are no property that mm -hmm. uh, it can exist for uh, for example for uh, large interval but does not exist for some sub interval mm -hmm. so if we if we go back the important thing is that this uh, right hand <clears throat> side always mm -hmm. exists that these as a transform always exists and there we only have uh, um... to go back to say that this is a random variable yeah mm -hmm. So on the on the right hand side we only have uh, the back integral. Obtain is a, a S transform terminology of some random variable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. it uh, uh, sometimes it gonna be a problem? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Maybe we can well, talk about this at the end a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Um, let's 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 uh, let's continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, in particular, the uh, if the integral exists, exists, then it has always zero expectation. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> okay. Um, I want to yeah introduce a special class of processes. So in particular, we can now integrate uh, deterministic functions. And so we will consider, or I will denote the set, uh, or I will, I will take the set di of x to be the by mapping t to the integral of 0 to t of uh, e of s where is a continuous real valued functions in case the Hurst parameter of or x is greater than a half and where v is a constant function for less than a half. So in fact these integrals exist. One can show that these uh, integrals always exist. And this piecewise definition of the uh, differentiation of E comes from the fact that we also define our operators m plus and minus uh, piecewise. Okay. So now for these class of processes, we can uh, prove an Ito formula. So again, this is a direct generalization of the Ito formula found in Christian Bender's works. And okay, what we have here is that for any capital T positive in any process Y as described before from di of X given by integrating the function B. So for any these processes, we can see that if we have a function F mapping from zero to T times R times zero to infinity, such that F is continuously differentiable in the first argument two times in the second argument and just continues in the third, together with some rather lenient growth bounds that I won't discuss here. Then we have that f of t, y, t, and a. So note here, of course, we have a functional of y, t, but we also allow for uh, explicit dependence on the time t and the scaling function a. So this f, is then equal to f at zero zero a, um, yeah, and then plus three terms, similar to the classical E two formula, where the first term is concerned with the time derivative of f, the second term is concerned with the first, let's call it space derivative of f, times the function v t, and where the third term is concerned with the second uh, space derivative of f. And note that the term concern space derivative 
uh, is indeed uh, given by, uh, again, uh, integral with respect to x, whereas the other integrals are non stochastic integrals. Excuse me. Uh, uh, so the differentiability of this square of the norm in the last summand mm -hmm. uh, is, is evident if we just look for definition of those operator mh minus, yeah? Yes, it's not completely obvious, but it's uh, the proof is elementary. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it, 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 it is checked. That, uh, it yeah, has... yeah. Okay. yeah, it can also be found in Christian Bender's paper. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. My thesis, and also this was uh, yeah, absent in the work of Michael Gomoloch. And okay, so let me check time okay i have a few more minutes left um then i would like to present uh you know, our application of this formula to the theory of evolution equations and yeah for that we will consider a homogeneous kernel having two positive real numbers again to the positive numbers of degree 2h minus 1. So again, h is our Hurst parameter of our process x. And then it was shown in the work of Christian Bender and Jana Kinderknecht that if the Laplace transform of A solves the, solves the evolution or solves the differential equation uh, shown here, then the process u of Tx defined as the expected value of u0 of x plus xt, where u0 is some uh, Schwarz function, for example. Then this function u solves the evolution equation or the generalized heat equation to be more specific, I've shown below, uh, depending on the kernel k. Yeah, Martin, could you please uh, recall what is phi? This this uh, has no right here. That's just uh, the uh, variable name. So LA as a function should solve this equation if we substitute it for phi. Mm, thank you. Oh. So this is, uh, has nothing to do with anything right now. That's just a name. OK, so this fact was proven already, but with our ITO formula, we can uh, find a new approach to prove this fact. And uh, oh, okay. the new approach would be to apply our ITO formula to the function, the functional u0 of x plus xt, which indeed is a, a suitable function we can apply our formula to. And Applying this ITO formula and then taking the expected value immediately results in the equation you can see below. So that u of t as defined above is equal to u0 of x, the integral from 0 to t of 2h times s to 2h minus 1 times 1 half the, in this case, simply the second derivative of the expected value of a times u0 of x plus xs. So this is almost the uh, yeah, desired evolution equation you want to see, but not quite. But indeed, it's not very complicated to go from this lower equation to the desired one above. But I won't go into detail here. Uh, yeah, one last thing I want to quickly present is that can generalize this approach, this new approach, because we can also apply our E2 formula to uh, functionals of the type u0 of x plus y t, where y is not x itself, but resulting from integrating a deterministic function that we have had before. And then we can yeah, quite easily see using the exact same arguments as before that functions or that the function w of tx 
given by the expected value of u0 of x plus yt solves the same generalized heat equation, but with a time changed kernel. So this time changed kernel is given by the time changed sigma. And of course, this uh, time change somehow has to correspond to the function v we are integrating to get to the process y. And indeed, we can quantify this connection by seeing that uh, sigma of t is given by the L2 norm of the operator mh minus applied to the function, the indicator function 0 to t times v. Note that this is the same term that we already had in the E2 formula, all raised to the 1 over h. Yeah, so there is a correspondence between time change in the kernel and the uh, function being integrated. Okay, oh. uh, you know, maybe uh, the time is going. Yes, yes, I am finished. That's all I wanted to show for today. As I said, we are till, still, still trying to find some additional results in this direction. But for now, this is all I have to say. So attention and I'll take some questions, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we have just a, a second for yeah. very small question. Mm -hmm. uh, if there are no question, I, I just uh, have to comment that uh, uh, I did a lot in this direction with the um, uh, application on different Haussian random operators to uh, the uh, random elements, especially with integration. Mm -hmm. And it will be interesting to check your ETO formula when the integrand is random, because usually when we have extended stochastic integral, we have additional term to the, uh, comparatively to usual ETO formula. We have another one term related to, uh, for example, in good case to stochastic derivative. Of, uh, of the integrand. But in your case, stochastic derivative is zero because V is not is deterministic. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me uh, send, uh, maybe I will send to uh, Jana and you my book and some related others, uh, and uh, we can continue this conversation uh, uh, in private uh, manner. Uh, I, I, have have a very, I have a very, very short question. Uh, if you return to the last slide, uh, uh, Nikolai, unfortunately, uh, okay. let's, let's okay. do it. Uh, okay. We already have uh, four minutes later. Uh, so uh, I have to announce next speaker, uh, mm -hmm. Vadim Tkachenko from Kiev Academic University uh, uh, with the talk stationary solution of semi-linear stochastic diffusion. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, how well can you hear me, please? Uh, yes, but uh, not. Uh... Uh, let me try. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I almost cannot hear you. The volume is very low. Yes, exactly. exactly. Oh, how well can you hear me now? Oh, it is much better. Yeah. Yeah, I changed the microphone. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Let me start my present. Okay, so can you hear my screen? Can yes. My screen? Yes, we see your screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my name is Vadim Tkachenko, and my supervisor is Andrei Pilipenko. And the topic of my talk is stationary solutions of semilinear. Stochastic differential equations. Uh, okay, let's begin. So, this to uh, this talk is based on the results of my master's thesis, and it's this work we focus on stationary solutions of stochastic equation of. Uh, the following form. The main result, uh, the main result of uh, my thesis is the theorem of existence 
and uniqueness of the stationary solution. Um, can you please wait a second? Mm, I hear myself, please, if you want to ask me something. Um, uh, we hear you, Vadim, please continue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, if you want to ask me, please. Or something, okay. or ask me something in the end. So, the main result is the theorem of the existence and uniqueness of the stationary solution, uh, and it is proven under uh, rather weak assumptions about the process B in the right hand side. And in the next, uh, in the second part of the thesis, uh, we show some examples of the processes that uh, satisfy these assumptions, and uh, one of them being a fractional Brownian motion. Now. Uh, briefly about the history of this question. So stationary solutions of stochastic equations were a subject of research of, of many mathematicians, for example, uh, Kasminsky, Daprata, Zabchik. Uh, Kasminsky wrote a book called uh, Stochastic Stability of uh, Differential Equations. Daprata and Zabchik wrote a book called uh, I think uh, equations, uh, stochastic equations, uh, was working with uh, dynamical systems. Uh, Anatoly Yakovich Drogovtsev wrote the book called uh, Stationary and Periodic Regimes, but it wasn't translated into English as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and uh, the main narrative looks something like this. Uh, first, people started studying stationary solutions of stochastic equations uh, with the Brownian motion in the right hand side. Then, uh, for example, Doprat and Zabchik uh, started working with uh, in the dimensional uh, analog of Brownian motion. Then, people started working with a fractional Brownian motion in finite dimensional spaces and then in infinite dimensional spaces. For example, uh, an article by Maslowski and uh, Schmalfus was wrote in 2004, I think, it focuses on the equation of the same type with fractional Brownian motion in Hilbert space. And uh, in equations of a more general type with multiplicative noise. It means that here uh, we have some function of our process. <clears throat> uh, in this work, we focus with uh, on the equation with linear noise, with additive noise, I'm sorry. Uh, but the process B, isn't supposed to be Brownian motion or uh, fractional Brownian motion. Now, the only thing we need is uh, stationary increments of this process and some other assumptions uh, about how fast this process grows. So uh, now we need to recall uh, two definitions, namely, uh, a random process is called stationary in a strict sense if uh, the distribution of a shifted vector uh, is the same as the original one. So this process does not depend, uh, its distribution does not depend on the translations in time. And here you can see the formal definition. We say that the process has stationary increments uh, if uh, such a vector of increments 
its distribution does not depend on age. So uh, now let's specify some terms. Once again, we consider this stochastic equation where x is an unknown random process, lambda is a positive constant, f is a non-random function, and b is a random uh, is a measurable random process. It's important to specify in by solution because uh, this differential is not well defined for, for many processes. They may be not differentiable. So by the solution of one, we mean a random process which satisfies uh, the following integral equation, almost sure. And now uh, we can formulate uh, the main result. So assume that the following con conditions hold true. F is Lipschitz continuous with its Lipschitz constant L being less than lambda from our equation. Of course, this means uh, that the following inequality holds true. And the second condition, uh, the process B of T has stationary increments, had locked trajectories. This means right continuous and uh, with left limits, almost surely. There exist two positive constants, C and epsilon. Is, is there a question? Uh, and epsilon should be less than lambda minus L. Such that we have the following estimate, estimate on the uh, growth of B of T almost true. Then there exists a unique stationary exception of the equation. Uh, excuse me, uh, what do you uh, understand by stationary solution? Um, I understand a uh, random process which satisfies this definition. But you see, uh, your noise uh, B has a stationary increments. So mm -hmm. it is natural to solve uh, the uh, equation in such a way that the uh, our that obtained process X together with increments of noise uh, organized pair of st uh, stationary pair. Okay, uh, thank you for this. Because uh, it can happen that, uh, at least theoretically, that uh, on the one interval you related to the increments of the noise in one way and another interval in another way, yeah? But uh, I'm sure that it does not happen with your, uh, with your proof, but uh, it will be uh, good uh, to formulate it with more stationarity than, than you just claimed in the theory. Yeah? Thank you. Uh, I will think about it later. Okay, and uh, I want to give a sketch or a... Uh, plan of the proof, uh, but first uh, I need to give some uh, notation and uh, one property. So uh, the solution of equation one, which started at the moment as from the point X, will be denoted by X uh, of S X small t. This is just a solution to uh, the Q problem the interval uh, as uh, uh, by the definition uh, in our notation this solution satisfies the following equation and uh, under our assumptions namely uh, that f is Lipschitz uh, we have the property of uh, uniqueness of the solution for each initial condition 
And uh, from this follows a very important relation, which is often called uh, a co-cycle property. Uh, I think I will uh, demonstrate it here. So we have three moments of time, S, U, T, in this order. And uh, this relation means that uh, on the left side, we have a solution which started at the moment S uh, from the point X, and we solve it to the point T. So this is X of S, X small T. But we could start at the moment uh, U from the point in which the process got this time, and from the uniqueness uh, of initial condition, we have that these two values are the same. Okay, uh, now I can uh, give a sketch of the proof. So uh, we start from, yeah, let me first uh, formulate the idea. So to construct a solution, And okay, uh, we want to construct a solution uh, and so then prove uh, that it is stationary. But first, we need to obtain some estimates. And the first one is the estimate for the difference between solutions starting from uh, different points, but at the same uh, time. And uh, this is a simple property. We take our equation for corresponding points x and y, uh, take the difference, and then we uh, use uh, Gronwald's Bellman lemma and some other calculus uh, moves to prove this uh, inequality, where mu is a positive constant. And this is very important. Uh, namely, mu is equal to uh, lambda minus L. And this is why we need to have uh, our L less than lambda. Because now we have the uh, contraction property of some type. We can already see that when uh, S goes to minus, minus infinity, these two solutions, uh, so the difference between them goes to zero. Then uh, the next step is to uh, obtain an estimate for uh, the growth of our solution on the unit intervals. And we obtain uh, the following estimate where epsilon is uh, from the second assumption of our theory. Uh, now, when we have this estimate, we can look at solution starting at uh, all consecutive moments of time. Uh, of course, we take here uh, minus k, minus k plus one to be less than or equal to t. Uh, so we have the following estimate where this uh, new constant mu minus epsilon, epsilon is still positive because of our assumption. Now, we can prove that our sequence x minus n zero, so this is uh, a solution that starts at the moment minus n from zero. And we do this by uh, looking at the difference uh, x minus n zero t minus x zero m uh, minus m zero t. So this is a difference between uh, some whole moments minus n and minus uh, m. 
And what we do is we take the difference between consecutive moments and uh, we estimate this uh, as a sum of the differences between these uh, intervals. So I'm going to briefly write something. So minus k plus one. Using our previous estimates, we can get a uh, tail of uh, a series that converges. So this finishes the proof that our uh, sequence is a Cauchy sequence. The next step is to show that we can take the limit uh, Uh, when s goes to minus infinity of our solution, starting from the point x, and we get a limit which does not depend on x. Then we show that this limit is a solution to equation one. Moreover, it's a stationary solution. And the last step is to show is to show that this uh, stationary solution is unique, almost sure. And that finishes the proof. Okay, and the second uh, part is uh, concerned with the examples, the processes that satisfy uh, our assumptions. In the first uh, abstract uh, class of examples are the following. Suppose that we have uh, in the processes that satisfy the assumptions of our theory. Then we can construct uh, new processes that also satisfy the assumption. So the first one, uh, we take uh, the same process, but with different constants and different uh, shifts in time. And the second example is uh, a linear combination of uh, different independent processes. Uh, now let's... Uh, but of course, uh, in the second example, you will change the epsilon, so you must control uh, the, those constant, uh, Lipschitz constant and lambda, yeah? Um, I don't think so. They have to, yeah. You, yeah. you multiply on the coefficients at least, yeah? Uh, so, uh, and then you uh, have a sum. Uh, so uh, you, you have to check the inequality, yeah? Okay, I will check that. Everything's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh, and the next class of examples are the processes with moment estimate. Mm -hmm. Suppose that we have a uh, measurable process V of T with stationary increments and for some positive constants M alpha beta and for all ST from the unit interval, zero, one. The following inequality holds. This is the same inequality as in Kolmogorov's theory. Then uh, the process B of T grows slower than any exponent. Namely, uh, we have the following property. Uh, and Are there any questions? Uh, and one example uh, from this class of processes 
is fractional polynomial. I'm gonna say the definition once again because we already heard it today. Uh, it's easy to show that Brownian fractional Brownian motion has stationary increments and uh, that uh, the following moment can be calculated as follows. Uh, of course, because uh, fractional Brownian motion is a Gaussian process and the difference of Gaussian uh, uh, process is again a Gaussian process. And uh, we need only to calculate its mean and its, uh, 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 excuse me, its second moment dispersion. Uh, and can be done using this formula. And this will be just a action of uh, a normal, normally distributed uh, variable with the mean zero and uh, second parameter being t minus s, t minus s uh, to the power Uh, alpha over two, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then, of course, so. uh, with such parameters and to the power alpha. Yeah, okay. Of course, we can take the minus s like this. We can take the t minus s to the power to h out of uh, our distribution, and we get the following equality. Fractional Brownian motion also satisfies the assumptions of our theory. The next class is a uh, example. Uh, this is the next class of examples. We need to uh, say a few words about alpha stable processes. So a Levy process Z of T is called alpha stable with alpha from zero to two. If the characteristic function of this process has the following form. So here we can see it's a uh, Levy measure and uh, where alpha is strictly less than two, uh, we don't have Brownian motion. Of course, Brownian motion is uh, also included in our class of examples uh, yeah, because this is a uh, partial case uh, of fractional Brownian motion. And uh, it is well known that uh, alpha stable processes uh, have uh, such growth that uh, if we power uh, bigger than one over alpha, uh, then the limit supremum of uh, such relation is zero almost surely. Now, uh, Levy processes are defined for uh, T uh, greater or equal to zero. So we can uh, continue our uh, alpha stable processes in the following way. We can define process B of T to be uh, Z one of T, uh, where Z one is a stable process independent of Z two. And when T is negative, we can take minus Z of two of minus T. 
then uh, such a process satisfies the conditions of theorem one. Yes, uh, we need to take minus here, uh, so we still have stationary increment. Okay, and uh, the last example is uh, convolution. We have a measurable process with stationary increments, z of t, uh, with such a property, for example, z can be uh, alpha stable process. And we have some function g uh, with the following estimate and uh, alpha and beta are related in the following way. Then we can take uh, the convolution of these uh, two functions, this process and, uh, or function. And we'll get a process that satisfies So this is the last example. Here are some uh, references that I mentioned. And thank you for your attention. That is my talk. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe just one short question because we still uh... If there are no any questions, thank you again. And we uh, are going to the next uh, talk uh, in this uh, first uh, meeting uh, today. Uh, the speaker is Sadila Sharipov uh, from Uzbekistan uh, uh, with the talk of limit theorems for functional autoregressive process with random coefficients. Uh, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't. Uh, yes, uh, Vadim, please close Vadim, your presentation. Vadim, stop your presentation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Sadilo Sharipov. I work at Romanovsky Institute of Mathematics, Academy of Science of Republic of Uzbekistan. Uh, so it's a great pleasure for me to participate in this conference dedicated uh, to the great mathematician of the 20th century, Anatoly Vladimir Skarahot. And uh, I would like to thank all organizers for kindly inviting me to this important event. Mm, so my mm, so my talk is about on limit terms for functional autoregressive process with random coefficients. Um, so uh, and. Uh, my talk includes uh, the following uh, section and its subsections. Uh, first, uh, so uh, I I, for, I consider the first functional data analysis. And here I collect some historical uh, events uh, in this, uh, in the first, uh, my topic. And uh, in uh, it's, it's uh, well known that in recent years, functional data analysis has established itself an, as an important field of modern statistics uh, because of its applicability of to problems which are difficult to cast into a framework of scalar or vector observations. So uh, functional data come in many forms. Uh, however, it always consists of functions, often smooth curves. Uh, so here, uh, I want to tell about the excellent movie, Rams and Silverman, uh, which was published in 205. Uh, this monograph has become a classic reference to the ideas and a large review of functional techniques of functional data analysis. And other uh, key references include monographs by Dennis Bosk from France and Bosk and Blank and Ferret and View. Horvath and Kakoshka and uh, Surveys, QS, Goya, Gonzalez, Mentec, and uh, we, uh, we can find a lot of reference uh, in their papers. And uh, <clears throat> so I turn to the functional time series. 
as quoted below, since a variety of functional data is collected sequentially over time, then we can expect that the data in a given time period are affected by past observations. Then as the main tool of analysis or, to st or study data is used models of functional time series. Now, the literature on, uh, on uh, functional time series is concentrated uh, on concentrated, mainly concentrated around the similar linear process uh, we can uh, refer uh, uh, managers by Bosk and Bosk and Blank. And the more simple model for a uh, functional time series, a fun as extends to the functional setting, the after risk model of order one, and it's very flexible modeling and predictive tool uh, for continuous time uh, random process. Uh, the general theory of functional after risk process, which determines operator was presented in the pioneering work of Dennis Bosk, uh, in uh, his monograph, one can find a lot of uh, a lot of limit theorems for this model and uh, the uh, uh, and uh, and he uh, <clears throat> applied his uh, obtained uh, theorems to statistic uh, statistical inference to for this model. And I want uh, to I want uh, I would like to uh, describe uh, the model. Uh, so uh, let uh, we have a probability space, a complete probability space, and uh, let uh, by B we uh, denote a separable Banach space with norm, and let uh, we consider a measurable space B and B here. Uh, this B is a sim algebra of bottles of all bottles uh, subsets of Banach space. For any uh, real P, uh, which is uh, larger than one, then we denote that LBP is a space of Banach valued random variables such that as this, uh, this piece moment is finite, then uh, we throw so, so the talk, we consider only uh, uh, integration is, uh, 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 the integration in Banach spaces is meant by Bochner uh, integration. And we also denote by LBP, LB is a space of bounded linear operators over Banach spaces B equipped with usual uniform norm. So uh, here I, uh, <clears throat> I recall the definition of random operator. A per operator, uh, this operator T is called, uh, is, is called a random operator if uh, this um, if this event is measurable with respect to the uh, sigma algebra A, if uh, for all uh, elements of Banach space X and all uh, elements of uh, all uh, all uh, open sets uh, from uh, from uh, uh, from borel subsets of Banach spaces, um, it's well known that uh, when uh, say. Uh, uh, this uh, B, uh, this B, uh, in the in the case when uh, our space is separable, is separable and in, in separable Banach space, the two sigma algebras coincide. So uh, two sigma algebras, uh, sigma algebras of cylinder uh, generated by cylinder sets and uh, by open uh, by open um, sets are coincide in in the case when uh, our our space is uh, se separable. So we consider a sequence of uh, random, uh, not not only random, but bounded and linear operators defined on the on the same uh, probability space with values in LB and this LB space endowed with its bottle sigma algebra. We know this LB is uh, is also Banach spaces, and so uh, and now uh, <clears throat> uh, I uh, here uh, I provide the definition of. A Banach valued white noise. Uh, so uh, a sequence epsilon n of valued random variables is called a strong white noise or innovation process if it's an if it's an IID and such that the expectation is zero and with uh, finite variances. Right, uh, here a definition of uh, after regressive uh, random coefficient after this process in Banach spaces. Uh, the seconds xn of b valued random variables satisfying the following recursion equation. This equation is called a Banach valued random coefficient after this process of order one. Uh, so we abbreviate it by br, brca1. 
is a case when uh, rho n does doesn't depend on n and but but deterministic uh, in the case when deterministic rho it's uh, in the literature this uh, model uh, is uh, oh, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of yeah, literature on this subject and uh, a natural uh, question arises what will be uh, if we if we uh, consider uh, not deterministically operator but uh, random operator uh, the sequence of random operators uh, so uh, <clears throat> uh, in order uh, to uh, provide uh, some limit terms we must uh, we must consider some um, some conditions on existing uh, which ensures the existing uh, of this uh, process and so here uh, we study sufficient conditions uh, for the existence and uh, uniqueness of strictly stationary solution of uh, B, uh, this process, uh, BRCA1 process. Uh, we need the following conditions, C1P, C2, and C3P. And we know that C2, in the condition C2, there is no uh, depends on P. And uh, now we here uh, in, in the first and the third uh, condition series, and uh, here a a n zero is identity operator and a in in j operator is defined by uh, the following operator um, for g for j is j is less is uh, bigger than one and the series on the light right hand the series on the right hand side of two converges almost surely in LBP space. So uh, uh, this uh, process is well defined and uh, this uh, process is defined by linear process with random coefficients. Uh, so uh, here, um, the next slide is devoted to the main results. And here I uh, we provide the strong law of large numbers for- uh, Excuse me, uh, can I ask a question about the previous slide? Uh, we have uh, we have the condition uh, C1P and C3P with the same P. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, how do we know that uh, uh, here we have uh, the convergence of the series uh, uh, almost surely? Uh, mm, it's uh, it's a it's a good question. Thank you. It. Uh, Oh, uh, can I explain? It's it's yeah, uh, more than more than Yes, more than I guess. Uh, yeah, it 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 provides it. Там берется как берется как берется как частичная сумма вот здесь берется как матождание и это все проверяется. То есть здесь там приходим к вот эту вот эта сумма всегда вот эта часть вот эта сумма всегда является конечным. То есть вот это раз всегда сходится с вероятностью единица. Вот это, это все это вот это не очень понятно, потому что даже в среднем сходимость пока не очень понятна. Ну и как бы исходимости в среднем не следует сходимость почти наверное, да? Тут еще да, надо. Есть теорема и то есть есть теорема. Да, да. Вот. Sum, sum yes, yes, да, да. да. But, but, uh, of the norm is uh, finite. We, we use independence yes. here. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I is... understand. Uh, and uh, what is the expectation of the norm? We have some p and uh, yes. we have a square. So uh, at least we have calculated something. Uh, OK. Um, uh, maybe. Maybe because of maybe. independence, we have yes. talked of Kashi we can use uh, kashi and Shoulder, uh, uh, no, case, not Kashi can... Bunyakovsky, just the independence, so we, we can estimate yeah, any yeah. norm uh, and take expectation and uh, this P square of the uh, from. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, here, uh, <clears throat> theorem states that uh, we can consider BRCA process defined in LB1. Uh, so we have only once moment, uh, first moment with uh, zero mean. And if condition C11 and C31 hold, then we have uh, uh, strong law of Lajam. So SN divided by N uh, mm -hmm. converts, converts to zero element of band spaces, uh, surely. Mm -hmm. 
so uh, and uh, in order to formulate this, the uh, the second uh, re result we i need uh, some uh, uh, no notion of s smooth banished spaces uh, here uh, I provide a definition. We say that the separable Banach spaces is R smooth, where R is is bigger than one and uh, less than two. If there exists an equivalent norm such that uh, this supremum is finite. Uh, so uh, this notion was introduced by Pizier, Julius Pizier, in 1975. According to, uh, then, uh, there is a paper by Assault, and uh, according to Assault, uh, we know that if uh, a Banach space is R smooth and separable, then there exists a constant D, which this constant is larger than one, such that the, for any of for any sequence of beveled martingale differences, we have uh, the following inequality. And uh, in Banach spaces, we know that uh, in the case uh, of TP, uh, in a uh, uh, We may claim that these spaces play the same role with respect to martingales as space to type P do with respect to the sums of independent random variables. Uh, in other words, I want to say that in the uh, there is a notion of type uh, type P balanced spaces. In the type P balanced spaces, there is uh, the sequence are independent. Uh, so but, in uh... the yes. you see, uh, in case of independent random variables, I think that yeah. it is necessary and sufficient to have such kind of inequality for uh, space to be ty of type P. Necessary and sufficient, but uh, I... Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's, it's know, the result of uh, Araujo. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. It, but I, yes. I don't know about the uh, uniform... Uh, actually, this uniform Martin Hall uh, difference property, yes? And uh, uh, yes. I don't know. Uh, is the uh, smoothness of the norm also is necessary for this inequality. I think uh, that this is a difference with the independence in martingale property. Yes, yeah? yes, yes. It's, mm -hmm. yes, okay. it's, it's, it's different. Uh, yeah, and this is just, su know. just sufficient, uh, just sufficient. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Just sufficient condition. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, here uh, uh, we now consider, we consider uh, results on complete convergence for this process. Uh, so uh, we here uh, provide the complete convergence or uh, the convergence uh, or the convergence rate of the strong law of large, large numbers for this process. Uh, this theorem says that if Xn is a RSAR process with conditions C1P and C3P, uh, so uh, these conditions hold, three conditions hold, are satisfied. Then, and we assume that uh, this uh, Banach space is air smooth with smoothness uh, where r larger than large is bigger than p and if uh, p's moment of uh, strong white noise is finite for some p where p uh, is uh, larger than one but uh, uh, less than two for any alpha uh, inequality uh, and for all epsilon we have this uh, 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 in the strong of large numbers uh, for this process. Uh, so here alpha is, uh, is always uh, less than one. And uh, for this alpha, we have uh, this uh, result. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, uh, I here in the next slide, I put a uh, Central theorem for this process, and assume that uh, Banach spaces is two smooth Banach spaces, and we assume that the condition C1 and C3 2 are satisfied. For this process. Then SN, SN divided by square by n um, is in distribution to be valued and centered Gaussian random element with this covariance. Here, I'm sorry, I don't. I don't write that. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the expectation must be zero. Uh, expectation of the process must be zero. Here, I don't. Uh, I, it's my mistake. I'm sorry. Uh, 
here I must uh, write that uh, expectation of the process. The, the noise has zero expectation, yeah? No, yes. Mm -hmm. the, uh, on white noise has zero expectation, but uh, in, in the... By the way, we have also need uh, to x, x zero must be z zero because uh, he, their their uh, random operators uh, random operator takes place. Yes, yes, yes. You can see the not stationary uh, process, mm -hmm. but uh, the process which start from some. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what is uh, gamma? So... Gamma is covariance of this vector. Your co covariance, uh, covariance of this uh, random covariance so operator. Gamma is covariance of, of this random variable, not equal to this random variable. Or... Yes, yes. Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very, mm -hmm. it's very good. Uh, yes, question. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes, it's right. So, uh, thank you, thank you for your attention. And so, uh, I want, I want, I must say that that this work was done uh, under supervision, under supervision, Professor Hirol Deling from Bochum University, Germany, and I visited uh, this university in 20, 2020, Yes, twenty twenty. I visited this university and. Um, we consider this uh, this topic, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe you. some some questions or comments, please. In past theorem, uh, how to prove uh, weak relative compactness? Oh, it's uh, yes. So, uh, thank you, thank you very much for your question. Uh, the main idea of proving uh, these terms uh, is uh, the basic idea is to use Martingale uh, approximation for sums of stationary random variables, stationary processes. So we decompose this process Xn uh, as a uh, Martingale term, and there is a we can we have uh, composition and. Uh, one of the the first term is uh, Martingale term, and the second is negligible. If we if we show that uh, this negligible term is goes to uh, to zero in probability, we we can show with this. And uh, for the first term, for the Martingale difference case, uh, we yes. It is so uh, this theorem for Banach valued yes. uh, Martingales, yes? Yes, Banach valued the air smooth Banach valued Martingales, yes. 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 So we have uh, decomposition, and by the decomposition, we uh, we verify some limit conditions of some limit theorems well known. And for the second or and the third, there is uh, there is the third term. We have third terms, the, the, the process they com decompose into third terms, yes. Yes, and uh, we show that the uh, two terms goes to, for example, uh, these terms are negligibly in probability, and so on. We 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 can uh, we can prove uh, uh, limit terms. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you uh, again show the uh, representation of the solution to your equation as a series? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, so uh, maybe uh, one of possible way to discuss uh, the such asymptotics uh, can be to cut this uh, series uh, just uh, rem in order that remains fixed number of terms, then we will have almost independent uh, sequence uh, to prove uh, and uh, uh, I have to say that Maybe the next step can be uh, the law of iterated numbers. Yeah? Uh, in in yes. Schauder sense, uh, in, in Schauder sense that uh, you will have some compact. Uh, 
yeah, as, a, as a set of as a set of partial limits. Uh, and uh, uh, can I ask you? Uh, there is uh, such a book, uh, by the way, of Bosk, devoted to the linear processes. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, do you know this book? Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, yes. So, uh, oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, he he did a lot in this direction, and uh, yeah. uh, I, I I think that uh, the same method can be applied, more or less yes, the yes. same method the can same, be applied yeah. uh, here. Uh, I see. And I want, if I I have time, I want to compare our result with the previous authors, and uh, yeah, there was. Uh, and not only we consider this model in Hilbert space case, uh, <clears throat> Hilbert space case, authors considered, uh, 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 French authors considered uh, this uh, model and they proved a central limit theorem law of iterated logarithm, uh, strong of large numbers and so on. And, but they uh, considered a more restrictive condition. Uh, they, Three uh, P. Uh, they considered uh, the case when the uh, operator of this norm, the supreme supremum of row n, is less than one. Elmer Shirley. They considered this uh, condition. Under this condition, they proved uh, uh, limit theorems, and uh, we know if random variable is uh, is not Elmer Shirley, then uh, for this. Random variables has uh, any moments, any moments, and uh, it's a restrictive condition. Mm -hmm. Okay, we replace this condition by this condition. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Can thank I ask you. One more short question. Mm -hmm. could, could you please show us the series? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. It seems to me that this representation is well defined if rho n are not bounded, but if they are independent strong random operators. So not bounded random operators, but uh, strong and independent of epsilon. So maybe it is possible to prove uh, existence of stationary distribution for such uh, random operators too. Uh, it's it's a good question. I I must think about this question because I don't know because uh, you uh, you say that. Uh, so you, you you might look at, at probably at the book of uh, Andrei Anatolievich Dragov so about definition uh -huh. and composition of uh, composition of independent uh, random operators. So uh, you said that can we uh, can we re remove the assumption of uh, bound the operators are an, yeah, uh, on an. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I must think about this uh, question. Yes, I must think. Okay. I don't know. Mm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, now okay. we have a small break, uh, thirty minutes up to uh, Kiev time, sixteen uh, thirty. Uh, so see you later.